Lesbos studio, it's a, it's, it's a Lesbos studio. End of. The trouble is with this channel, I tend to buy guitars that I like. This is like a big Ponzi scheme of guitars at the moment, and if I don't start selling some, we're gonna be buggered. <laughs> And, and it's not going well. I keep, I've got, there's so many guitars. The Telecaster Deluxe that I reviewed last week. I mean, I can't, I'm keeping that. The Casino, I'm keeping that. The Riviera, I'm keeping that. Oh, well, it's quite nice that, I like that. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome as always, good to see you. So today, another Gibson Les Paul. I can hardly believe it myself. Uh, this of course, as you saw in the thumbnail, is the Les Paul Studio. Ebony, as you can, you can clearly see. Um, lovely looking guitar, isn't it? Lovely looking guitar. This one cost me 1249 pounds here in the UK, which seems to be pretty much the street price of this, which places it obviously way out of what you'd call affordable, certainly compared to the sort of guitars that we normally review on this channel, but still in the uh, affordable way to get into Gibson Les Paul ownership territory. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? This, alongside the tribute, are more than a grand less than a Les Paul standard. And they, um, and they purport to offer that experience, you know, that, that, you know of, of owning a, a, a proper Gibson Les Paul. We, now we reviewed the Tribute three or four weeks ago. I think it was only about three or four weeks ago. And in that review, I said I, I, I'd chosen that one for various reasons, not, not necessarily because it was cheaper, but I didn't think there was a lot of difference between the, um, the Tribute and the Studio. So yeah, I got the Tribute and then we did, a, we did a review of that and then we did a big comparison with five Les Pauls, Epiphones and Gibsons. Yeah, there's a link to that. But obviously I, I put the Tribute in um, and I thought, well, you know, you can't have them all. Can, you can't put them all in, can you? Can't get them all. But apparently you can. So <laughs> just, a few, just a few weeks later, I find myself buying a Studio anyway. So what we'll do today is we'll review this properly. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the whole thing as we normally do, you know, all the measurements, all the pickup readings and Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. And then at a later stage, we might get into doing a proper comparison with the Tribute because there are quite a few more differences I can immediately see than I'd originally uh, imagined. So what we'll do today is we'll do a thorough deep dive review of this Les Paul studio. Uh, we'll play it quite a bit and we'll, we'll do all the measurements of the neck and we'll talk about all the specs, all the bits and bobs. We'll do the pickup readings, we'll talk about the pickups and we'll, we'll take them out. We'll have a look underneath and we'll look, look at all this nonsense here because this has got some fancy coil tap shenanigans. And if you're a regular to the channel, you know how much you like these push pull switches. So we'll we'll have a look and see what's going on there and um, try and go through all that properly and see what's what. If you're in a hurry and there's something specific you want to find out about this, such as what the neck measurements are or pickup readings are, all the timestamps are in the description box. So, um, you know, go straight to it, check it out. If you've got a little bit of time, great, grab a drink. Let's, um, let's have a proper look at this thing. Okay, so let's look at the specs of the guitar, what it's made out of and stuff. So it's got a mahogany body, maple cap, mahogany neck. So just this is standard Les Paul construction, although this has the ultra modern weight relief. So I'll put a shot on the screen so you can see. So it's got a lot of, a lot of holes in this. We'll weigh it in a bit and um, see what it weighs, but it does. It does feel quite light. 
and apparently the, the weight relief or the ultra modern weight relief uh, achieves that, the desired effect of, of making it lighter without any degradation in the tone, I think it says on, on the Gibson website. So there you go. So it's got a rosewood fingerboard on this, proper rosewood fingerboard. It looks quite smart, I think. It's got medium jumbo frets, although to me they look, they look quite skinny, but they are called medium jumbo. It's got a Graftec nut. The Graftec nut, I mean, it's not cut in the same way that the ones they put on the Epiphones are. I'll do some close-ups with this, but you can see this. It, the strings look quite tight in the slots, which is what causes that catching on the G-string. Well, it's, it's famous for the G-string, isn't it, on Les Pauls? The Les Pauls are famous for their G-string tuning stability issues because it, it tends to catch there if it's not cut well. Or if you go up a gauge in strings from, you know, what were installed. I think they install these with 10s, but if you want to, if you put a, uh, if you went up a gauge, you probably would find that that was a bit of a problem in, with this nut, because you can see there's no, there's no um, tolerance there. The tolerance is a tight. That's what I'm trying to say, I think. That's what I said. So anyway, we'll see, we'll see if it causes any issues, that. Um, there you go, Graftec nut. Grover tuners, good old, solid, lovely, shiny Grover tuners, as you can see there. Um, chrome plated aluminium hardware on this. We'll weigh this in a bit, but I think this is the lightweight aluminium stuff. So that's good. Uh, what can we say? What can we say? So, um, See the poker chip here? Oh, the poker chip here. There is a poker chip, but it's not here. Obviously, not on the guitar. It's in this lovely, lovely gig bag that it comes with. These are really nice, these gig bags. And somewhere in that pocket is the poker chip. So all you've got to do is find it and then wrestle with that for quite a while, trying to work out how you're going to unscrew that with your bare hands without making your fingers bleed. Because you don't really want to get a, a pair of pliers to that, because you'd be guaranteed to scratch the, the finish. Talking about which, talking about the finish, while we're on the finish. So this is gloss nitrocellulose. So this is a proper nitrocellulose guitar. Although unfortunately, it doesn't smell as nice as, as the ones that come in the hard cases do. I've definitely got a feeling they, they spray something in those cases to enhance that smell. Because this one doesn't really... No. Oh, yeah. If you go close enough, you can well, you get a whiff of it. Oh, well, it's quite nice, that. I like that. Anyway, it's gloss nitrocellulose. And the other thing about this guitar is it's black. And uh, now a little while... About, it's actually about a year ago now. Time flies. I bought a gloss black nitrocellulose Les Paul Jr. Um, from Peach Guitars. Now there's a video on the channel, that whole story. That guitar came with scratches all over it. Very fine, very fine swirly scratches all over it, but also some quite nasty stuff all over the thing. It was a mess to be honest with you. There's a film about it there. Anyway, uh, if you watch that another time, but I was told at that time that it's quite normal for black guitars because it's hard to um, to finish them properly because it's nitrocellulose and it's hard to work with. So yeah, they, they come with scratches. It's quite normal. Well, I just want to say this hasn't got any. There's no scratches on this whatsoever. It's it's perfect finish. Well, I mean, I say perfect. Yeah, it's per it's pretty perfect, really. I can't see anything at all on this finish that worries me whatsoever. So yeah, that was a lot of nonsense, basically. Um, I knew that at the time anyway, so. But anyway, yeah, it just proves that point really, doesn't it? Um, the only mark on this is it's got that little stand mark where I've had it on the stand for a few days. And that's the thing. You've got to be careful with nitro because it marks very easily. But I don't mind, you know, I don't mind 
if I'm adding the marks to it. That's that's the point. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about the pickups. So these pickups, we have got a 490R in the neck rhythm. Yeah, 498T in the bridge. So we'll pop them up later and we'll do all the readings and stuff. I think I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I did actually, I can't remember. This has got coil taps on it. So this will probably have, um, well, I don't know if it's got a printed circuit board in it. Let's find out. Okay, so first things first, let's weigh it. Here we go. Eight and a half pounds or 3.77 kilos. So, you know, that's ended up at a sort of a, the sort of weight you'd expect a nice Les Paul to, you know, feels like a proper Les Paul. Okay, what we'll do now is we'll plug it in and we'll, we'll have a quick listen and we'll go through these controls, see what's going on there, have a quick play. And, um, and then while we're doing that, we'll take it apart. We'll get the strings off and we'll start poking around and, and measuring stuff. Cool. Let's get stuck in. So, this is what it sounds like, unplugged. It sounds like this. For what it's worth. Sounds okay. It's quite nice and spanky. What I call spanky. Feels all right. So, plugged in. Let's see what it sounds like. So the rig this week, still using the Blackstar HT1 HR. So the Blackstar one watt head with reverb, that's what the R stands for, through a little Fender 1x12 cab that I picked up cheap years ago. And on the board today, I've got the EHX Soul Food. I'll go through the whole signal chain, obviously Polytune Tuner, I've got me um, my Boss CS3 compression sustainer, adding a little bit a little bit of oomph to it, and then I've got the EHX Soul Food going into the uh, the Boss SD1 Super Overdrive, um, and obviously at various times I will have one or both of those on, and at sometimes none. But what I'll try and do is cut in the the board shot so you can see see what's on or see when I engage the drive, as it were. And then um, a little bit of slapback delay from the um, the Boss DD7 into the looper. So, I mean, the chain, you know, a, a board like that, a signal chain, you're going to lose a little bit of the signal, obviously, because of all the leads and cables and, you know, but a lot of what I'm trying to do is make the guitar sound as good as I think I can. Um, so, and it's, you know, there's nothing fancy on there. So it's what it is, basically. This is the bridge pickup. Again, no drive on that, just uh, pickups pushing the amp quite nicely. That's the humbucker. And that's just one single call. Oh, sorry, I'm pointing at the wrong one, that one. It's great, you don't lose much volume there, do you? So that actually sounds well, actually quite effective, that one. If you've heard me moaning before about how these things don't make a lot of difference, that seems to work, doesn't it? So that's good. So over to the neck pickup. Full, I pointed the right one. Full humbucker.
they sound nice. I like it. And again, no drive on that at all. So um, in between, both pickups on humbucker together. <laughs> the middle position okay um split on the neck pickup it's not right is it It's either got a built-in intermittent fuzz or it's a bit knackered. One of the reasons I'm always moaning about these things, isn't it? So, we'll. Needs a little bit of pretension, I think, that. take the back off and I'll, I bought some contact cleaner today because every time I get any pr problem <laughs> I always start looking at wires and everyone says just spray a bit of contact cleaner on it so we'll, we'll see if that's possible shall we but that's not it's just a little bit scratchy isn't it it might it might just actually clear from use or I might break it completely. All right, we'll have a look at that later. And we'll, I mean, we'll try and use it and see what happens, shall we? Okay. Middle position with both splits. Now, I got confused earlier. I said curl split. It's cold tap. The different things. Call split. So let's take this pickup. It's a, it's a humbucker, traditional humbucker. So it's got two windings in it. You know what a humbucker looks like. And a coil split would separate and just use one of those coils. A coil tap does it differently. What a coil tap does is it uses it uses both, but it taps into the taps into the winding halfway through. I think it is so. It's different because of that. I think it does a sort of a similar thing. I don't know any more about it than that, but that's what I read. <laughs> okay. Coil tap taps into the both coils halfway or at some point. Coil split splits the coils and you only use one or other. Right. Uh, okay, let's play something and uh, see what happens. <laughs>
that's really light. It's chrome plated aluminium tailpiece, advanced plating, very light indeed. 35 grams. We like that. And this is the Nashville style tunematic bridge. Now, again, that's really light, chrome plated aluminium. And that weighs 28 grams. So that's good stuff. So now the strings are off, we can we can take a a closer look at the frets and the fretboard. Looks nice. There's no obviously there's no there's no sharp edges at all. That's really good. Finish along there, you can you can see. If it didn't have the 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 the, the gloss um, lacquer, I think there'd be a little bit of a ridge there. You can feel you can feel the join there. That side, you can see, you know, the, the I suppose the paint imperfection, really. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just pointing it out. I don't, I don't think it's an issue or a big deal or anything. Some might say, well, it's, you know, it's not a great finish, but it's not, it's not a problem, is it? It's part of its character. <laughs> Bridge pickup, and that's a 498T. So the resistance on that is 13.60 kilo ohms. Wow. And the neck, 7.57 kilo ohms. So, yeah, that is hot. And they claim it's hot. 13.6 kilo ohms. Um, inductance wise, six point seven two Henry's as well, which is wow. And on the neck, four point two four. So this is a hot mother. A hot mother, I think you'll find. So let's just pop those out and have a have a quick look under there. There's nothing to see here at all. It's a it's a it's a, it's just a black hole. It's quite nice and neat and neatly finished in there. And as you as you can see on the back of the pickup, uh, it's just uh, it's obviously got the Gibson USA stamp and it's identified as 490 R. Oh. 13th of the 12th, 21, or 12th of the 13th, 21, as our friends the other side of the pond say. So there you go. This is the bridge. Again, nice and neat and tidy. You can just about make out the maple cap there, I think, where it joins. And there's the, the pickup. 498T, same date, 12th, 13th, 21. That's what that looks like.
that's what we're dealing with there. The PCB. And... Uh, I wouldn't know where to start with that, so... Uh, let's have a quick look under the truss rod cover. Bell-shaped truss rod cover. Two screws emblazoned with the word studio. And obviously on this studio, like, you know, the tribute, you, you, you just get the um, transfer Gibson logo, whereas it's obviously... Um, inlaid on the on the standard and the higher models but anyway there you go well that's nice and neat and tidy yeah i call them the bell end type um because i'm an idiot it's robust looking isn't it this kind of this gibson style one it does look like it means the business doesn't it compared to the you know the little allen key ones that you know yeah i mean whether or not it's any more effective I don't know. It looks good though. Okay, so here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. So they call this a slim taper. It's a C shape. It is a, you know, you can see it's a slim C shape, but it's not what I'd call skinny. It feels, it feels fine. It feels nice. So there you go, that's the Gibson Les Paul Studio. I'm very pleased that I, I got this. I'm very pleased that I got this. I kind of have been wanting to get one for quite a long time, actually. I've often been eye eyeing up this, the ebony one here. Although the colours are, the, co the, the colours are all pretty nice. So I didn't mention that earlier, but they do this in a, a wine red, which is, I think, quite one of the most common ones. They do it in a tangerine burst which looks pretty cool, and a smokehouse burst, which looks very cool. And obviously this ebony, I went for the ebony. I don't, I don't think you can go wrong with ebony. It's probably the hardest color to film because <laughs> you get all sorts of reflections off it. But, you know, it's, it's always going to be cool, isn't it, a, a, an ebony guitar. I'm pleased I got it. A guy that I used to play in a band with, he, he, he's actually the bass player in my band, but he had one of these uh, and it, he was really fond of it. I remember him being really fond of it. It was, it was his guitar. And I think, I think that's the thing about studios. I think they've been around long enough to have established their, their, their place in the scheme of things, if you like. What I said about the tribute when I reviewed it a few weeks ago is, is that that's it's kind of, or even by the very nature of the name, it's a tribute to a, a Les Paul standard. It's kind of, you know, it's trying to be a Les Paul standard. Whereas maybe the, the Les Paul studio, it's, it's, it's a Les Paul studio. End of. You know, how, how different they are, I, um, we don't know yet. So we're going to find out in, in a few weeks' time. Might even be next week, I'm not sure yet. But in, within a matter of weeks... We'll do a comparison with this Les Paul Studio and this Les Paul Tribute. Talking about how this sounds, I thought it sounded really nice in, in that clip, some of that clip. I hope you agree. But I thought it sounded nice. And I'm kind of, I think I've done enough of these now to, to kind of be able to say that and be confident with my own ears rather than sort of, you know, sit back and say, well, it's not for me to judge whether or not it sounds nice. I thought it sounded nice. I think these pickups are a really good match. The, obviously, the, the bridge pickup, the, the 498, is, is a full-on balls-out, you know, rock thing. And, um, you know, so really, it really does push. And then you've got, and this neck, 
the sounded really the clarity that we were hearing from that earlier. I was amazed, to be honest with you. It sounded great. You know, and and I say that because Les Pauls are known or have been known for being quite dark in the neck pickup, but this wasn't at all. So I thought it sounded great. And the the coil taps. I think actually it works really well on the bridge, perhaps because that's so, you know, full on anyway, that when you tap that, there was quite a distinct sort of difference. And to an extent as well, apart from the crackling from the, the neck, which is a shame, you could hear that that was quite a usable sound as well. Now, personally, I'm not really into those things because I, because I've got several guitars, I suppose, if I want a single coil sound of grab another guitar, I wouldn't want to try and get it from a Les Paul. Um, but I understand that some people, you know, have only got one guitar. If you only wanted one guitar and you wanted a balls out rock and roll machine that could also do some nice single coil stuff, then this does work. As long as the push pulls work, or for as long as the push pulls work, and I'm quite cynical. I always say that, you know, stuff can go wrong. Well, unfortunately with this, we, we saw that it was already, sorry, I'll stop messing around with that. It's annoying, isn't it? Sorry, I can't stop it. Stop. We already saw that it was crackling already, so it, it probably needs attention already, which isn't great. And you would probably maybe even send this straight back. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I wanted to review it. And actually, that's part of the review. There's no point in me sending a guitar back because it's got a fault, I want to show you guys. And it is a fault, it needs fixing. So if you'd bought this, you'd probably want to send it back um, or get them to sort it out, which is a pain in the ass, to be honest with you, isn't it? But there you go, that's what it is. Uh, apart from that, it plays, it plays really nice. It's the right weight, it's the right shape, it's the right color, got the right name on the headstock if, if that's something that matters to you. It's a really cool guitar. Yeah, it's a really cool guitar. I can't keep both this one and the tribute, so I will, I will, let's put them, I need, I mean, I need to sell these things so I can buy some more, to be honest with you, because we're going to run out of steam. This is like a big Ponzi scheme of guitars at the moment, and if I don't start selling some, we're going to be buggered. I do have to sell some of them, unfortunately. The trouble is with this channel, I tend to buy guitars that I like. And, and that, the difficult thing is, you know, deciding which ones I must keep and which ones I'd really like to keep, but genuinely need to sell so that I can buy some more guitars to review. Um, and, and it's not going well. I keep, I've got, there's so many guitars, the Telecaster Deluxe that I reviewed last week. I mean, I can't, I'm keeping that. The Casino, I'm keeping that. The Riviera, I'm keeping that. Lots of guitars I've got an excuse to hang on to because I've not finished with them yet. I'll be making more films with them. But once I've made, you know, two or three maybe films out of some, out of a guitar, I think, well, I should sell it. I need to sell it to, to fund something else. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's come to the time where I think, well, I need to, I need to offload some. Um, so, you know, stuff like the, the Epiphone 59, what a brilliant guitar. But, you know, really, that needs to go to a better home, someone that will treasure it and play it. Um, because it's, you know, it's not really good to any of us sitting on the wall here when it can be enjoyed by somebody. And the same, really, with the Epiphone 61, the, the white SG Les Paul. That probably needs to go soon. Lazarus has already gone to a good home. Uh, guy Max down in Kent in the UK contacted me, reached out, said, is it for sale? I said, yeah, look, you know, it's gone to a great home, that. So same has to happen to some of these. And the point of, point of this is, you know, I can't keep all these Les Paul. So what I'll do next week or maybe the week after is I'll do the comparison between the studio here and the tribute. And we'll decide which of those two I would keep or I would sell whatever way around you want to look at it. I'll probably end up selling both of them anyway, because I've got plenty of other Les Pauls. Um, 
So anyway, yeah, well, we'll do that anyway, because that'll be fun. We'll, do a, we'll, we'll have a proper look at what the differences are between these two guitars, apart from the price, which is around about 300 quid. This is a bit more expensive. And there might be good reason for that. We'll find out. Let's wrap this baby up. Nice guitar. Pleased I got it. Hope you enjoyed that. Come back next week and see if we're doing the comparison or something else. Uh, whatever it is, I hope you will join me. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing you then. All right. Cheers for now. Ta-da.